Hello, my name is Marie Walsh from Limerick Institute of Technology and I want to talk to you about special groups of molecules called polymers or plastics. When I was thinking about this topic I looked around my home and realised just how many items are made from plastic or polymers. Just some of them are shown in this collage. What do we already know? We should know about atoms and molecules. We should know that the element carbon forms more compounds than all the other elements put together, and that it has a special branch of chemistry called organic chemistry. We should be able to look around us and identify different materials, and predict which are based on natural substances and which are synthetic or man-made. If we think about proteins, these are polymers made up of chains of amino acids. These are natural polymers, as are polysaccharides and lipids. If we think about hydrocarbons, we would include polymers, for example, polythene. These two examples alone show us that there are natural and synthetic or man-made polymers. In this video, we will see more synthetic polymers. What do we want to know? We want to know about petroleum. Polymers, polymer synthesis or polymerization, the relationship between polymers and plastics, plastic around us, problems with plastic and pollution, and recyclable plastics. Let's start with petroleum. The word petroleum has its origins in the Greek words petra meaning rock and oleum for oil. Petroleum or crude oil is a naturally occurring liquid found in porous rocks or reservoirs below the earth's surface. It is an organic material composed of a mixture of different sized hydrocarbon molecules with possible inorganic contaminants. After the crude oil is removed from the ground, it is sent to a refinery, where different parts of the crude oil are separated into usable petroleum products. The first part of the refining process is called fractional distillation. Following distillation, Heavy fuels can be processed further through other processes including cracking and reforming to obtain high value products. Polymers are among the high value products. By now you might be wondering if plastic and polymer mean the same thing. The word plastic derives from the Greek plasticos, meaning capable of being shaped or moulded. Plastic can be both a noun or an adjective. The key thing is that all plastics are polymers, but not all polymers are plastic. Plastics are widely used as they have many useful properties. Most plastic and synthetic fibres are made from chemicals derived from crude oil and are made up of long chain molecules called polymers. Let's think some more about polymers. Polymers are formed by chemical reactions in which many molecules are joined together sequentially to form a chain. Monomers are the simple compounds whose molecules bond together to form the polymers. In many polymers, only one type of monomer is used. In others, two or three different monomers may be combined. The process of making polymers is called polymerization. There are two main types of polymerization addition polymerization and condensation polymerization. Addition polymerization is a process involving many small, unsaturated monomers combining to form a large polymer molecule. Polymers made in this way are called addition polymers. A simple example of addition polymerization 
is the formation of polythene. Unsaturated ethene mon monomers join up by the breaking of the carbon-carbon double bonds, allowing them to bond to form a long carbon chain, polyethene or polythene. In condensation polymerization, a small molecule is formed as a byproduct each time a bond is formed between two monomers. The small molecule is often water. An example of a condensation polymer is nylon. There are polymers that contain only carbon and hydrogen atoms. For example, polythene, polypropylene, polybutylene, and polystyrene. Polyvinyl chloride, or PVC, also has chlorine attached to the carbon backbone. And Teflon, or polytetrafluoroethene, has fluorine attached to the carbon backbone. Other common manufactured polymers have backbones that contain elements other than carbon. For example, nylons have nitrogen in the backbone. Polyesters and polycarbonates have oxygen in the backbone. There are some polymers that, instead of having a carbon backbone, have either silicon or phosphorus in the backbone. Let's look at some examples of polymers. The photo shows them in their pure form. Polythene, polyvinyl chloride, polystyrene, polycarbonate, polyurethane and polyacryl amide. What do they have in common? And what's different about them? These polymers are now shown in some of the products they are used to manufacture. The majority of manufactured polymers are thermoplastic, meaning that once the polymer is formed, it can be reheated and reformed over and over again. This property allows for easy processing and facilitates recycling. The other group, the thermosets, cannot be reheated. Once these polymers are formed, reheating will cause the material to ultimately degrade, but not melt. Modern polymers have lots of different uses. For example, new packaging materials, waterproof coating for fabrics, for example for outdoor clothing, fillings for teeth, dressings for cuts, hydrogels, for example for soft contact lenses and disposable nappy liners, smart materials, for example shape memory polymers for shrink wrap packaging. From the examples we've looked at, we can see that polymers or plastics are very useful substances that have changed the nature of our material world. Plastic is a valuable resource and plastic pollution is an unnecessary and unsustainable waste of that resource. Plastic pollution is known to come from three main sources. Our rubbish. When plastic waste is collected and transported to landfill sites, it is at risk of escaping into the environment. Plastic litter is also a major issue. That is plastic that either isn't collected where waste management facilities are lacking, or plastic that is merely dropped or disposed of on streets or in the environment. Microbeads are tiny pieces of plastic contained in various personal care or cosmetic products that are washed directly down the drain. For example, face scrubs, shower gels and toothpaste. Many of these microbead particles are too small to be filtered out by wastewater plants and may end up flowing into the ocean. Ireland has officially outlawed the sale manufacture, import and export of products containing microplastics. And many other European countries have done the same.
Finally, poor standards in industrial processes are responsible for some plastic moving into the environment. The majority of plastic is non-biodegradable. Recycling is part of a global efforts to reduce plastic in the waste stream, especially the approximately 8 million metric tonnes of pl waste plastic that enters the Earth's oceans every year. Plastic recycling is the process of recovering scrap or waste plastic and reprocessing the material into useful products. The symbol here is used to indicate whether a plastic product is recyclable. The symbol may also have a number, and the meaning of that is shown in this table. So what have we learned? Polymers can be natural, for example silk, proteins, polysaccharides and lipids. Synthetic polymers are very useful substances that have become increasingly important to us. They are made of monomers that are largely derived from the refining of crude oil. There are two main types of polymerization, addition and condensation. Polymers that can be moulded are called plastics. You should be able to name some polymers and their uses. You should also remember that the importance of preventing plastic waste and using recyclable polymers wherever possible. Thank you for listening and watching. Please check the project portal for more resources on our plastic world.